If you listen to mainstream music these days, you know this rap flow. Look, I might just chillin' some bait. I might just chill with your boot. I pull up in Rory's and shit. With choppers and Harleys and shit. For real. I'm young and rich and plus I'm bougie. Hey. I'm not stupid, so I keep the oozy. Yeah. Purple and yellow on Missy. I need my answers to miss me. Then I'm the macho like Randy. The chopper go out for granted. If you love it, you're in luck. It's probably not going away anytime soon. If you hate it, I'm sorry. But hey, you have something in common with Snoop Dogg now. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Amigos, but all them niggas sound the same. That rapid fire style of rap has been dubbed the Migos flow, even the Versace flow. It's come to define mainstream artists in recent years, but the musical principle that drives that flow, the triplet, it's been around forever. In 2013, Migos, the Atlanta rap trio, released a song called Versace. I'm just going to pause that for a second. Drake loved it so much he freestyled over it. Born in Toronto, but sometimes I feel like Atlanta adopted us. And it blew up. You can't deny Versace. Like, my grandma would walk around singing Versace, and she didn't even know, like, the words the song it was about, but the hook is so catchy. That's how big of a song it was. That's Justin Hunt. You might know him as the former editor-in-chief of Hip Hop DX. He covers hip hop trends and news on his YouTube channel. And so I think you have, like, a lot of forces that's just sort of combined at the right time for that flow finally to make it to Providence, even though its origins have been around for a while. Triplets are a standard in musical composition. They occur when you divide one beat into three notes instead of the usual two or four. Recognize this? That's probably the most famous measure with triplets, but they go back even further. These are types of rhythms that have been at the foundation of cultures where hip hop came from in the first place. It's, it's African rhythms, and so that's as old as the equator. In rap, triplets work the same way. Just take a listen to Young Thug's Get High, featuring Snoop Dogg. Now compare that to another point in the song where there are no triplets. Bubblegum, cookies, OG and KK. We like Craig and Day Day. Who gives a fuck what they say? And you start to hear the difference. It's hard to say exactly when the first triplet was wrapped, but a lot of people point to Public Enemy's Bring the Noise as one of the earliest examples. Another track with triplets in 1987, the Dismaster's Small Time Hustler. Some of your buddies that you call a posse be plotting and scheming to get them some scotty. Triplets existed during the East Coast, West Coast era of hip hop, but they didn't really define those artists. They actually emerged out of the Midwest and the South when those communities started developing their own style. Like that Ohio down to Tennessee corridor, there was a lot of stylistic similarities through a few of the different artists. Just listen to this Crazy Bone verse off of Bone Thugs and Harmony's debut album. That flow stands in stark contrast to the way Easy E approached the same beat on that song. And then there's Three Six Mafia from Memphis. I think it's very difficult to give anyone else credit other than Lord Infamous. Mystic Styles is a joint that I remember really early. Tommy Wright III, he's another artist from Memphis as well. He had a song called Gangster Forever. All these artists released their debut albums in the mid-90s, and they weren't just rapping fast, they were manipulating the beat with triplets. So how exactly did they pull it off? Well, you have to look at the structure of the beat. For triplets to really eventually come and be so famous, they needed to steal the show. And to steal the show, they needed their own space. That's Martin Connor. You might remember him from these two videos. So you can create a hip hop beat in a couple of different ways. This is the beat, and I can interpret this beat though in a rap song in two different ways. I can go either buh, tip, buh, tip, buh, tip, buh, tip, or I could go like this buh, tip, bum, bum, tip, 
But my snaps have always come at the same speed, right? But the snare drums? They come half as often, giving the rapper more space to play. Notorious Thugs illustrates this perfectly, and it's also one of my favorite songs, so I just want to talk about it. This instrumental sounds like a slow, down-tempo beat. That's because we're used to counting the snare on the two and the four. The actual BPM, though, is double the speed, and the snare hits on beat three. Essentially, the instrumental beat has two rhythmic lanes for the artist to rap in. Biggie, Busy Bone, Crazy Bone, they all keep you on your toes by constantly changing those lanes. Because the beat is stretched out and feels slow, they can very naturally divide those notes farther into triplets. Let's switch back to Lord Infamous of 3-6 Mafia. That slow beat allowed him to rap an entire verse in triplets. From the 90s till the mid-2000s, Southern hip-hop artists slowly took over the charts, and with that, they brought with them the sound of trap. That stretched out beat is the foundation of the trap sound, but you'll also hear a deep 808 kick drum, driving sense, and a rapid fire hi-hat that is often programmed in triplet patterns. Triplets were always in rap, and then triplets were waiting for trap music to come along, and then trap music came along, and like it was just a marriage made in heaven. A song like Versace made the sound and rhythmic feel of triplets just super catchy. Just listen to how that hook plays back and forth with those explosive hi-hats. Five years later, and it's pretty easy to see why triplets are Migos' bread and butter. I don't think that Migos is going to trail off or fall off. I think they have legitimate star power. And most importantly, I think they put together an incredible album this year. Read the ruler, diamond cooler, cooler. This a roller, not a mula. Hey! Dabbing on them like the usual. Damn. Magic with the brick voodoo. Magic. Not only that, they've been featured on tracks by some of the biggest artists of today. Triplets aren't just popular, though. They're really complex. The triplets sort of challenges the rhythms and the counts that we're used to. They can rev up the energy of a song almost instantly. Kendrick used them on Good Kid Mad City, and then five years later, on one of the most dramatic moments of Damn. I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. This is why DNA. I say that hip-hop has done more damage to young African-Americans than racism in recent years. I live about my DNA. This is my heritage, y'all I'm inheriting. Money and power, the mecca, I'm just Chance the Rapper has a similar dramatic transition to triplets on the opening track of Coloring Book. When he starts flowing in triplets, there are no snare drums. There are no bass kicks. So what does Chance do, but he makes the triplet the manifestation of the beat? These are two of the biggest artists outside of the South using triplets. They're no longer a niche Southern style. They have been dominating the sound of hip hop for over five years now. When a rapper does that rhythm, all of a sudden they're tapping into this greater collective artistic movement. So Snoop's not entirely wrong. That's what's wrong right now. Everybody trying to rap the same style. With the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Migos, but all them niggas sound the same. But he kind of misses the point. The fact that triplets are super popular now shouldn't undermine the fact that they're actually a really powerful rhythmic tool that's been around for a long time. 